Welcome to this, the first of three videos on how to use a data generator. My name's Andy Wicks, and in this video, we're going to be looking at strategy and planning, how to work out what you actually want the data generator to give you. In the second video, we're going to look at how to tell the data generator exactly what you've planned. And in the third video, we're going to look at how to upload the data that you get into your database. So let's get going. Failure to plan is planning to fail. And that's not a good tactic. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a data generator to generate data. And the reason we have to plan is because the foreign keys have to be inserted. If you create the tables in the wrong order, you won't have foreign keys that match records in other tables. The order in which you generate the tables matters. You therefore need to plan the order and then work out the number of records you want in each table. So what's the strategy? Well, the first strat well, there are two tasks that you need to complete. The first task is to decide on the order in which the tables will be generated. And the second task is to decide on the number of records to be generated for each table. The example we're going to use is the one that was used in the previous videos on database design, the second hand bookshop. You've been asked to design a database by a friend who owns a second hand bookshop. The database should allow the friend to keep track of what was bought, what was sold, and most importantly, how much was earned. After some negotiation, you agree on the following design. This entity relationship diagram can be downloaded from the text below this video. The order of the tables. First, I need to tell you that I have purposefully left out one of the tables in the discussion that's coming now. I've done this because I want to demonstrate how to import data from a different kind of file to the database. We start with tables that only have one ends. In other words, those that don't have a many connection. In this case, author, publisher, and seller details only have one ends. Next, we look at those with a single many. In this case, that's purchase and title. Then we can move on to those tables which have several many's. So you work from the ones through to the most many's. The ones with the most many's in my design have title category, title author, and book as the tables with several intersections. So we now have nine tables, of which we're going to use eight. We go, we've got author, we've got publisher, and seller details. These are the ones with only one ends. Then we've got purchase and title, which have uh, one many each. Then we have title category, author title and book, each of which have two minis on the joins. So let's take this one step further forward now. Now we know which order we're going to organise the tables in. The next stage is to work out the number of records for each table. So here I have a table that shows the order of the tables and the final column will show me the number of records I'm intending to have. As you can see, I've added the ninth table category down here. That I know has 32 records. You'll just have to take that as given for the moment. So where do we start with the numbers of records? Well, we start with the thing that's probably the biggest. It isn't actually, but we start with the thing that we think is probably the biggest. In this case, the most important item is the book table. There, we're going to have, say, 
2,500 books. So the shop has got 2,500 books in it. That may or may not be true. You may think it should be double that. Somebody else thinks it should be a few less. I'm going with 2,500. Then we look at the things that link to that. The next thing that we need to look at is the number of titles. Title, you'll remember, is different to book. A title is a unique title of a book, so The Order of the Phoenix, for example. And there may be several copies of The Order of the Phoenix, so the number of books has to be greater than the number of titles. If we've got 2,500 books, I'm going to assume 1,500 titles. Next, purchase. Where did we get these 2,500 books from? Well, I'm assuming that there were a 100 different places and people from whom we bought these books. Obviously, that has to be less than the number of the books. We look at what makes sense here. Seller details. So if we bought those 2,500 books in 100 batches, well, that's 25 books on average in a batch. But we may have made those purchases from 50 different sellers. So we're going to have 50 sellers. That obviously has to be less than the number of purchases. The publisher details... Well, how many publishers are there out there? I'm assuming 30, for the sake of this exercise. You may think it's more, somebody else may think less. Next, we're going to look at title category. Now, this is a function of both title and category. So, obviously, there's got to be more title category entries than titles. If there are 1,500 titles in here, and there are 32 categories, let's assume that each book has two and a bit categories. So something that's fiction might also be humour. Something that's history may also be a novel. So there are several ways in which these categories could be combined to make something that describes the generality of this book. You could well imagine a customer coming in and saying, can you tell me which science fiction books you've got? And then seeing that some are humorous, some deal with history, some deal with astronomy, and so on. How many authors wrote these 1,500 books? Well, I'm going to assume 700 authors. Now, that doesn't mean that there are 700 books there. Obviously, an author could write many books, and several authors could write a book. So that's where this is going. Finally, we look at author title. Author title is a combination of both the author table and the title table. So this is where author and title come together. If there were 700 authors... And if there were 1,500 titles, well, how many people wrote together? Well, let's assume that it's a few more. So we'll go for 2,000 author title entries. We now have a plan. This is good. The strategy was to decide on the order of the tables and then worry about how many records we have in each table. The next step is to execute the plan and generate the data. And once that's done, we can load the data into the database. I hope you'll have a look at the other videos, and thank you for watching.